Welcome to this first session of the new unit which is looking at atomic and nuclear physics. This session is going to start off by painting a picture of how scientific discoveries were used to create our present model of the atom. So you're going to go through and think about the history and how um, certain actions help develop and cause certain theories to become about. So, and we'll start off with the thinking of about a hundred years ago. About a hundred years ago, the science which was in place required the idea of an atom to look a little bit like a plum pudding. It was described as the plum pudding model, and it was a sphere of positive charge with some negatively charged electrons spread through it. And this was the dominant theory at the time. Then along came a guy called Ernest Rutherford, who was a British scientist, and what he did, he thought, I can do an experiment to uh, prove or disprove this, I suppose. And it was known as the Rutherford scattering experiment. Now, what Rutherford did was he gathered his team of scientists, and it's actually the team of scientists who did the experiment, a guy called Geiger, who you might recognize from a Geiger counter, and a guy called Marsden. And they did this experiment in Manchester. What they did is they got a whole uh, set of, of thin gold foil, which was only a few atoms thick, and they decided to fire some alpha particles. So these are radioactive particles through the thin gold foil, or at the thin gold foil. So if the plum footing was correct, the alpha particles would not pass through and be generally reflected back again. So they'd be absorbed or reflected back. That was the idea, and that was the premise. What actually happened was something completely different. One, most of the alpha particles went straight through the foil. Two, some of the alpha particles were de defected through a large angle. And a very few of the particles were reflected back again. So this was a finding, set of findings quite unlike what was expected if the accepted theory of the time was correct. And this put some thinking into place about how these observations could be used to deduce a new structure. So, as most of the alpha particles went straight through the foil, it must be realized that atoms are mostly space. Okay. So there's more space than there is stuff. The fact a few atoms were deflected a few large angles and a very few were reflected back means that at the center of the atoms there's a very, very small nucleus where most of the mass and all of the positive charge are, is found. Now, those ideas really help develop a model of the atom, which is one which we recognize today. One which puts electron, which has nearly no mass at all, and is negatively charged, circling around a nucleus which contains a proton, which has positive mass, and uh, a neutron which has a neutron a proton which has positive charge and a mass which is similar to that of a neutron and a neutron which is neutrally charged and has a mass similarly that of a proton and they're found in a nucleus area with electrons around circling around the outside okay. so that's uh, one of the ideas or the idea which you developed for the structure of the atom one of the interesting things is to think about the electrons. Um, although at the moment we've got here the electrons circling around, there was a, another set of thinking which made us think more about the electrons and how they actually existed in different energy levels. 